Welcome to the next edition of the 2019 Honda Monkey build. Tonight, what we're gonna do is move this license plate up to this area. We're gonna get rid of the lobster tail, which is the greatest name, I love that. So I'm gonna take off this uh, black fender and tail light and uh, license plate area and use the man in the box license plate bracket, which um, they have three versions of this. They have some pretty unique versions that I wasn't willing to go with yet because I wanted to keep the rear fender. So we just got the base model license plate bracket. We're gonna put that on. After that, it'll give us a little bit more freedom in this rear area absolutely clean up the looks a little bit. Okay, so we just unboxed the Man in the Box license plate holder and fender eliminator kit for the 2019 Honda Monkey. So this piece, although simple, it's going to change the look of the bike dramatically, so I'm excited to get this on. So I don't have a shop manual or anything. Uh, to know exactly how to get this fender off. So uh, a, a wise man once said, uh, don't be silly and just send it. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to send it here, take stuff off one screw at a time and figure this out. The logic behind these pins is to just uh, push the middle of them up. And I'm using a pencil. A screwdriver would probably suffice just the same. And once you get those pins pushed in, you can take a razor and use it to pry down the base of those push pins. And they just pull out. Okay, so the next step is to grab these little screws right here, little Phillips head screws that are holding the back half of the, the fender assembly on underneath. And with that, we take out the underside uh, fender liner, I guess you could say, which is gonna expose the uh, tail light and uh, side marker wiring and, and harness and connectors underneath. Next, we're gonna take off the 10 millimeter bolts that are holding the rear fender, the uh, license plate frame assembly off. As we're getting to the third and final 10 millimeter bolt, you'll see that the assembly starts to uh, come down for you. And there's a little wire harness loom holder up top there along the top line of the fender. Lastly, we just want to remove the connector that goes to the license plate lights. And you have to stick your finger underneath inside the uh, weatherproof harness there. And it pops out pretty easily. And there you have your entire license plate lobster tail. Cool part about this all is uh, how neat this bike looks with just the rear fender with no license plate. Uh, it's a real shame that you got to have the license plate sticking out somewhere. It's pretty neat looking once it's deleted. Unfortunately, the uh, huge tail light assembly on there kind of blocks the rear fender. So maybe in the future there'll be companies that will come out with a smaller more unobtrusive tail light assembly to uh really capture the vintage look and feel of that fender here we're having a look at the man in the box license plate bracket it's a very simple piece and it just bolts up to the existing mount to where the the original tail piece mounted up there's three bolts as you can see there this is how small this piece is compared to the original piece so when we mount it up, it's just going to show us the license plate directly connected to the original rear fender, and it's going to clean up the whole look a lot. I just wanted to add this in. I noticed this after I was done with the install that I used my own nuts and bolts and nylocks to mount the uh, fender liner to the license plate bracket, but that's not necessary. Um, so all you have to do is just pop out these nut certs that are on the original fender liner or the original tail 
um, piece here and uh, slip those over the license plate bracket to use the original screws. I did not do that. I'm not going to go back and change it. Uh, it would have been an easier option, of course. Um, but at the end of the day, I want to keep these stock pieces in as original condition as I can. Put them in a box, and uh, 50 years from now, if I go to sell this thing, I will have it all right there, um, ready to put back on. So I don't regret using my own nuts and bolts. Um, but either way, however you go about it, it's something to think about. You can definitely use these stock nut certs um, and just slide them over the license plate bracket and use the stock screws if you'd like which are these simple little screws here okay getting into the final steps of our license plate bracket install as you already know we made an assembly already from the bracket and the fender liner and we're going to reinstall that now and uh, these the pins here the plastic push pins from the from the factory here are pretty neat but just make sure you uh push them back out or else you're going to have a hard time getting them back in so go ahead and push them back out and pre-install them in your fender liner. I'm going to go ahead and pop this back in place. And the next step is to install the bolts onto our license plate bracket that goes to the metal fender. Bracket to the fender is really easy. You just have three bolts, three 10 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and thread those back in. The bracket slides over the provisions for the bolt. Okay, let's go ahead and tighten this bracket up. So the factory or the dealer installed setup for the license plate bolts are these little reflector type things with wing nuts. Um, they're really cheap and they're pretty gaudy, a little tacky. So I'm just going to go ahead and ditch those and go with uh, some 10 millimeter gold iridited uh, nuts and bolts here. And uh, I do have also a lighted LED license plate bolt set which um, I'm gonna not do right now because I want to get a connector that'll make it plug and play I don't want to have to splice wires if I ever get rid of it I want to be able to install it to factory OEM specs just with the connector I don't want to have to unsplice wires or you know make a hack job of it so I'm gonna go ahead and find the right connector for that license plate light and then we're gonna install that onto our LED license plate bolts so it's a plug and play solution. And putting the license plate back on is as easy as just installing your bolts and the nuts behind them. Okay, so that completes our man in the box monkey license plate bracket install. Two beers worth of work. It's a really easy process. You should have stock license plate bolts already, so you can reuse those. If you want to get a little fancier, you can go to the option that I'm going to go with the LED bolts in the future, or you could just go straight 10 millimeter or 716 bolts and go right to the, uh, to the license plate and just be done with it. So as you can see, it's a pretty clean install. Fits nice. Doesn't look like it's going to hit the tire. There's no way that the tires are going to go up that high anyways. Hope you enjoyed the install. Once again, you can get this from Man in the Box, which is mnnthbx.com. That's a great company. They, uh, they have some great products for the Monkey and the Grom. So check them out. Grab your license plate bracket. And if you have any questions, comments, thoughts on the install, be sure to put it in the comment section like if you like and if you really liked it you want to see more monkey stuff i have a series that i'm going to start doing uh, to highlight this build process so 
I would appreciate the subscribe. That's it. Enjoy. Thank you.